I sent over the email to you. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up. So go okay. ahead, check in with me. How was your week? And 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 we're looking for honesty here. If it was great, say great. If it was shit, just say it was shit. You know, just whatever happened this week. Um, it wasn't too too bad. Um, I have uh, work to do. Um, what I'm doing is a bunch of movie reviews and um, I have to go into Netflix and make notes and uh, it gets kind of complicated. Um, so I have to go back to the movies and review it again sometimes because I might have missed something. So that's where I'm at. Um, and I did a few of those. I did two of those so far and I have one more to do. <laughs> the one that I have to do is called The Christmas Chronicles and that should be interesting. <laughs> Great. Um, Lauren, uh, no, Ashley, how was your week? We're just checking in right now. Yeah, it wasn't the best week. It was a, it was a pretty bad week, but it'll be more fun right now. It'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. I, Carol, I want to Carol. Okay. Oh, that, I just wanted to tell Ashley I had so much fun last night rehearsing. Me right. too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Carol, how was your week, darling? Amazing. I just finished filming my short film, so I'm very happy. It's, it's yeah. almost all in the can. Just some people have to send in footage. And Lorenzo said I could put his children in, so <laughs> I got some kids. Oh my I have God, to find out awesome. what decade they have to be. Because the actress, I don't know if she was a child in the 60s or the 70s. I had to delicately ask her, like, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it was fun. Everyone did Zoom uh, improv. So, oh, wow. I'm that's really crazy. tired because it was like six hours. Oh. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, good, 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 good. Okay. So, there should be. Right. Um, no. I'm just downloading. I'm just downloading. Um, I'm downloading um, Samantha's scene because Alex might not be here because uh, he's still on no. sick. So, and I wanted her to um, have a um, a scene partner. Um, but thank you guys so much for being flexible this week. Um, we're entering the Christmas season, and I knew that I was bringing this thing right to the wire by, <laughs> by doing That's it right. up to the Christmas season. And I know that things get real crazy for people, but just hang in there. We have one more class left. Oh, and you guys have been absolutely amazing. The things I've learned um, from you guys and the inspiration that I've gotten from all of you has been phenomenal. And, you know, we, we might resume in the uh, beginning of next year. Um, it just depends on, on what everyone's energy is, but I just love having this time. And I love hearing you, your guys' stories through the week, but really today, thank you for being flexible and being willing to step in with other people's scenes, um, mm -hmm. because I know what it's like to be in a class and to have your partner not be there for your scene. I know how discombobulating and horrific that can actually feel, especially if you've done work on it and, and all of that. Okay. So, uh, so don't, don't be discouraged. Um, we're all going to have fun. We're all in this together. Um, and there's no, there's no, it's not a big deal. This isn't, you know, a big deal. Um, Cause you're not auditioning for a Hallmark movie or anything. Yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to start off by, I'm going to have you guys do um, a quick uh, little exercise. Um, and so get out your notebooks and um, I'm going to ask you guys, we're going to do, this is how the class is going to run today. I'm going to ask you two questions. And then I'm going to, we're going to jump right into the scene work, um, if that's okay with everybody. Um, so first question, in your notebook, I want you to list five things you could buy for yourself as an actor. Five things you could buy for your actor. And these can range from classes to headshots to lights, uh, microphones, just five things you could buy for yourself as an actor.
<clears throat> Stephen, did you see Dan's uh, post? He wants somebody to post the link. Oh, no, I didn't. Um, Just came through. Thank you. You're welcome. I so told Steve. you guys this was the week of snafus, didn't I? Snafu, <laughs> new, new <Right>. word. <laughs> Stephen, what I want for my actor at my old house, I wanted like this little storage level, but the contractor made it like a stage. <laughs> I was like, hey, I don't mind. Really? I had a stage. <laughs> can I move in? Can I move in with you? <laughs> the house is for sale. <laughs> I can find this. It's amazing how that happens. I had a stage. <laughs> Kingdom for a stage. Something, something happened to a friend of mine that was kind of interesting. He's an attorney and he just got um, his an article in the Los Angeles Times written about him because um, he was trying to work on so many cases that the overload was just just incredible because of COVID. And he, you know, wrote some sort of complaint about it. So wow. we got we got written up in the Times. Wow. 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 Okay. Um, okay. Now I want you to, under that, I want you guys, I'm so sorry. I have three things going on and I apologize <laughs> in advance. Dan's wanting me for the link. Um, I need to upload um, Samantha's um, video uh, file. So please bear with me, okay? And by the way, so no, we're not gonna. <laughs> we're gonna so so suck it. Look, if you take your if you look, you Italians are not welcome in Texas. Okay. Por <laughs> favor, <laughs> <laughs> my people are welcome. And I want to I want to tell you guys what snafu means. I was telling Jessica and Rebecca. Um, the the word snafu, um, actually comes. It's a World War II term. And it actually, it's when uh, the troops were stationed everywhere and everything was crazy and they didn't, the leaders weren't really focused. Um, and the troops used to say, snafu. It means situation normal, all, all things uh, fucked up. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Okay. Fubar. So, what's that? Fubar. Yeah, Fubar. Beyond all recognition. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, so I want you guys to, um, I'm going to ask you another question. If my, if my acting career were a game, what would it be? And I'm talking like clue, risk, old maid, any game that you think, okay? <laughs> Is it what represents it as in the state we're in now or what yes. we want to be? Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> that was easy, actually. <laughs> I thought of it, boom. Okay. Oh, I like all the Christmas trees, Rebecca's and Lorenzo's. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> I, got, I got my menorah. Where, where did it go? Very good. Happy Hanukkah. I haven't gotten around to lighting anything yet. But, <laughs> <laughs> but your few I think, days it, I think it still doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we supposed to write five? No, just oh. one. One, okay. Hey, does anyone know how to send Dan the link to Zoom? I, I cannot find it. I'm so sorry. Um, let me see if I've got it written down someplace. I no. have it written down. I could just type it. I have it written on the front of my computer thing. I'm, I'm just. Is, oh. Um, find it. I'm sorry. <gasps> is he in uh, Messenger right now? Is that yeah. where he's? Okay. Let me see. I'm trying to find it. I'm so Eight, sorry. Eight, three, seven, nine, two, nine, five. I know I sent it to Rebecca, so let me let me look real fast. I have it in an email to me. So. Ooh, if we could keep that that message going when we're done to support each other, it would be nice. Oh, absolutely. And you need to give him the code. 
Jessica, did you send it to him? I sent it to the messenger. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. 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 I should send everybody. This is the thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. We're going to do. All right. Ready? I want you guys one at a time to share both your list. Okay. So I'm vamping here. I'm vamping. I'm vamping. I'm vamping. Um, Dan, hi. <laughs> Hello. Okay, Dan, Dan, you can steal from everybody else, okay, as we get going. Um, I ask people to list five things that they could buy for their actor, and then I ask them, if your acting career were a game, what would it be? And I will let you go last to fill in your, um, your, your list, okay. And, and by the way, you guys are free, okay, I'm on track now, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen has landed. <laughs> okay. So, okay, Rebecca, I want you to go first. And I want you, and I want you guys to share these lists just really quickly, okay? Not with a lot of explanation, just boom, share them. Okay, Rebecca, go. Microphone, headshots, lights, room for myself, writing pads, and pins. Okay. If your life were a game? Uh, well, I started to say old maid, but clue. <laughs> All right, Samantha. Okay, I have um, green screen setup, uh, ring light, or a better light, headshots, um, IMDb Pro, and a website. Perfect. Okay, Lorenz. And by the way, you guys can steal from each other. If you guys hear an, an idea, just write it down on yours. All right, Lorenzo. You want my game? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. See, I'm not landed. I lied. I'm still in outer space. What's okay. your game? I have Trivial Pursuit. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I have. Can oh, wait. Jeopardy. Wait, you're only supposed to have one. Oh, Trivial Pursuit. All right. I like that one. Okay. Lorenzo. Yes. Uh, Postcards, headshots, website membership, advertise headshot uh, or work I've done somewhere, and other filmmaking equipment. And what game? Uh, Monopoly. Oh. <laughs> because at any moment, you could hit the big time or lose it all. Lose it all. Oh. <laughs> to jail. Yeah. Or jail, it's true, yeah. Are you more on visit? <laughs> Hope you got a get out of jail free card. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, Ashley. Hi. Hi. Uh, I had lessons, headshots, dance shoes, sheet music, and tickets to other productions. And then for the game, I had go fish. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. All right, Carol Wood. <laughs> uh, headshots, lights, a new computer, Adobe Premiere to edit, and classes. And my acting career, the game is trouble. Ah, <laughs> love it. Yes, you are. <laughs> Carol Wood, I should, I don't mind, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Carol Wood, but she, she wrote a movie and shot a movie called Chasing Indigo mm -hmm. a long time ago about these two rebel girls who chased after the band, the Indigo Girls. Oh. So, that is trouble. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank Jessica. Hey, hey. Um, like everybody else, a green screen, um, a ring light, a pro professional mic, new headshots, and a professional camera. And um, the game uh, shoots and ladders. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Okay, Dan. Hi. Hey. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I, I couldn't, get, couldn't get in. All right. Um, game of life. I, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Uh, singing lessons. I have self-tape equipment for home. Updated final draft on laptop. Uh, a new suit. And cowboy hat and boots for auditions. <laughs> um, and besides uh, that, and, us, what's your game? <laughs> Oh, my game is uh, life. Remember the old spinning wheel, the one through ten, and you'd take a car 
going around the game board. Yeah, that that was my like that. that. That's great. You know, if if you guys can look at your game, um, and you're you know, once again, we're talking about your vein of gold. You look at your game, that will tell you exactly where you are in your game of your acting career. So you know, that's kind of you know. And it usually will tell you like the things that you need to work on. Like mine right now is risk because I feel like I need to take a lot of risk and I need to make sure my troops are in the right country and I'm not dispersing myself, you know, because in risk you have to be in your country and you have to defend it. You have to defend your territory. So that's sort of my game. So um, look at your game this week and look at like, you know, why it's important to you. Um, okay, so I'm going to upload this scene right now. And I apologize that I'm taking class time to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Here it is, okay. See, I'm new at all this stuff too. The scene that I just sent everybody in chat, that is Samantha's scene. And um, Dan, would you read this with her when we get there? Sure. Because Alex might not be here, he's still on set. Um, so, I, and like I said to everybody at the beginning of the class, thank you all for stepping in and moving around because it seemed like a snafu. Um, week for everyone, like they weren't able to come or things were happening. And, you know, I told you guys sort of uh, fasten your seat belts because when you start acting and you start taking a class like this, that's when snafus happen and that's when the shit seems to hit the fan, so to speak. And, and Jessica, are you laughing at me? <laughs> Caroline is, Carol is. <laughs> I'm laughing at her laughing. <laughs> Did you spill your wine? <laughs> My husband just mooned me. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> There's a snafu. <laughs> Is he doing the TikTok where you walk in on your spouse <laughs> naked while they're uh, in a Zoom? <laughs> Can we get that on video? Yeah. I mean, aren't, you aren't you recording? Yeah. <laughs> well, the moon is out. <laughs> Get back in here. The whole picture oh, is felt Christmas tree covering his junk. Aww. <laughs> like Christmas tree. Oh my God. Talking about uh, bringing wood to a Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be homo for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica. See, see what happens. <laughs> see what happens when you're raised in a theater family. I mean, God, nothing. So good. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and my husband is in the circus, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to ask you guys, how did you find the exercise of writing your vein of gold scene? Good. It was good. It seemed pretty easy to get something out. And uh, I looked at Jessica's video first to make sure that I was writing something for her. And uh, it seemed to go great. And of course, being that she's a nice person and a good scene partner, it, it helped a lot because if she was not nice, it would, it would have been a lot more difficult. Uh, and I learned a lot about her life, which is always nice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> similar. Um, I found <laughs> um, of course, you, you know all about, you know, this is like a, a memory that I, I only unleash when I'm drunk. Um, wow. I wonder what else is. We got to get you drunk and find what else is in there. No, no, no. But to put it on paper was like a very cathartic and ridiculous experience because for me, it, it doesn't read like rom-com but in writing it out and getting it out of my system, it is kind of rom-com, you know, so. Yeah. Okay. Carol. Yeah, it just kind of flowed. Whoop, there it was. <laughs> Rebecca. Yes. I learned a lot about myself and about Ashley, and I, I tried to write it so that 
lessons learned. Okay. Always the lesson learned person. And I, I hope it, you'll feel that there's a lesson in there. Well, we'll see. I'm sure there is. Um, <laughs> Ash, Ashley, how was, how was writing yours? Yeah, I kind of found it a little difficult because I don't write dialogue often. When I write, it's usually just like my, me just writing how I feel. So I found that part difficult, but I really liked, I've never written for somebody else before. I really liked that. I thought it was interesting to write dialogue for a character for Rebecca. And I, I liked that part of it. Thank you. Great. Great. Did, Ash, I'm going to ask you, did you like writing for Rebecca more than you liked writing for yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's usually the case because we usually want to hide from ourselves but the reason I want you to do this is because when you're playing a character it's all about you you know and and the more you can get to the truth of yourself the the stronger characters you're gonna play um but Ashley, you're already connected to yourself because I've seen you work. The work you do is already very strong anyway. But when you can write about yourself, you can write about characters more honestly and openly as opposed to just on the surface. You can really yeah. get into what they want deeper, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. what scared me was like knowing that it was wasn't just for me because when I write I'm like oh no one's ever gonna see this this is just for me so I think what got me like stumped a little was like this is a scene that people are gonna listen to about me <laughs> so I was like well, it turned out that's good though because what is that is that me is that Not me? <laughs> another snafu um <laughs> <laughs> because what you what you guys are gonna find is that the more you can write about yourself and be honest, and I don't, and, and I mean brutally honest about yourself, about circumstances, about other people, the more you're going to be able to bring that to characters in a rich, organic, non-artificial way. That's what writing, that's the power of writing. Um, so Dan, how was it for you? Well, um, I found it excruciating, uh, and to, only in the sense that having to go from one of my I remembers, uh, like if you had said, you know, here your partner is blank, write a scene for both of you, that would have been fine because I've done that before. But it's like to have to come from uh, something, um, you know, from one of my that that was that was a challenge. And then then yesterday I found out that my scene partner can't make the class, so I have to whip something up last night. I, I like what I wrote. It's not lengthy. I, it, it's like, you know, it's, a, it, it's you know, and it, and it fits, but it reminds me how often, you know, how often we need to be flexible as actors. You know, we show up in a situation, the stage doesn't look anything like we thought it was going to look. The person we thought we were going to read with isn't anything like, you know, we get we last minute replacements come in, they hand us new pages, the author does a rewrite, and you just have to be flexible and you can't let it free, we can't, we can't let it freak us out. If I could just say one thing about snafus, one of the things I'm learning in this workshop is, Outside, life has a lot of snafus, but I'm trying, I'm trying to clear away my self-created snafus that get in the way of me acting, of my, that I put in as road, my own roadblocks to getting to act, because life will have its own roadblocks. You know, so, so that's been really helpful. I feel like I like to use the words up until now. Up until now, I've discovered you know, ro you know, snafus that I've been self-creating that, that I don't need to do anymore. Do you want to share any of them, or are they all? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm over commitment, being too busy. You know, I'll you know you know take, doing things for other people and never taking time to submit myself for anything. You know, it's like making my own creativity my own priority. Is you know, that's that's been a challenge for me in my life, and, yeah. uh, and but not because anybody else is forbidding me. It's just me loving myself enough to make my own life and my own creativity a priority. How no many people here overcommit themselves too what much? What was your question? Times. How many people here overcommit themselves too much and end up regretting it and not having and having to pare, pare their own creativity down because they're so tapped out with other people's agendas and stuff? Yeah, good. Yeah. And what yeah. else, Dan? And Dan, what you're sharing is is very real and honest and i was talking to and lorenzo probably i'm sorry if i'm sharing out of class but i actually talked to lorenzo during the week and 
and I, I told him why I teach this class is because it's very, very hard for us to admit like things aren't working for us or we're self-sabotaging ourselves um, or that we get hurt in this industry. That's why I teach this class. Um, it's not because I, I want to teach everybody to be the best damn actor in the world, although I'm sure everyone will be, but I teach it because we're not taught to share our wounds with each other. We're not taught to share things that get in the way or, you know, we're, we're not, we don't, we're not taught to share that. We're just taught to get tougher skin, be stronger. If you, if you weren't, um, if, if you can't just shake it off, then you weren't meant to be in the business. And I don't believe that to be true at all. I believe things hurt us. I believe we overcommit ourselves. And that's why I teach what I teach. So share some more, Dan, because what yeah, you're saying sure. is, I'll very, be honest. is very true. Yeah, I was, you know, I've been clean and sober for 21 years. And for years, my addictions and my alcoholism got in the way. I just literally didn't have the bandwidth to be able to pursue it. And then also... I had to do a lot of just I, without being a general way, I'll say that I had to do a lot of trauma therapy because my child, because like ordinary wounds that I'm not saying I'm special, or unique, or different, but you know, it's like when you get that rejection, it hit. You know, I wasn't responding as an adult getting rejected, I'm responding as an eight year old kid who was getting, you know, bullied and assaulted. Um, you know, that I was the, my, I was taking the wound at a deeper place than it was being offered. And um, so I had to, you know, and I, and I've tried to be gentle on myself now that I had to overcome these things in order to be able to, they feed me as an actor, but I had to overcome them in order to show up in the business. And often the things that feed us most as an artist can be the things that sometimes get in the way of moving forward in our careers and uh, in my experience for me. And so the parts of me that fill my life the most with my emotional life, you know, I have to, and learning that balance and being healthy enough to pursue a career, but still draw on that emotional well is probably the journey of most, a lot of artists. And, and, and it is. And, um, you know, if, and I just want to share two things with you, Dan, because I know that you read The Artist's Way. And, and by the way, I recommend all of you guys read The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Um, for you, you might want to look at The Virtue Trap. Mm. Uh, Julia mm. Cameron talks about The Virtue Trap. Um, and also, you might look at, um, Julia Cameron says, um, when she talks about workaholism, I don't know where it is, it's like in week nine or something. She says that addiction is the underlying thing for all blocks. And she just says addiction, like in general terms. So <clears throat> I think that once you actually are able to get yourself free from an addiction or whatever it is or whatever trauma it is and once you learn how to get your boat into the creative mode sometimes it brings up so much stuff that you self-sabotage and that's why what i teach is what i teach and i think what julie cameron teaches is what she teaches because she saw that a lot of stuff that's emotional gets in the way of the creative stuff right Right. And Stephen, your class is so important because you do deal with that emotional side and the blocks we create for ourselves. And that's why I hope we keep the Facebook group because of that support and that soft place to land. Because yeah, it hurts all the time with all the rejection and everything. But I love, I think it's in the artist's way that like the cream or the flooding, everyone rises together. If we support each other, we'll find our careers are you know, starting here, and then we're like, oh, we got to go to Stephen's Oscar party again. It's his second Oscar. Jeez. Oh, yeah. But, you know, we... we, we, we <laughs> I love being the star of attention. I'm a Leo at heart. I don't want to be a Libra. I want to be a Leo. <laughs> um, um, so, um, thank you, Carol. I, really, I think we should keep this, this going somehow. So, even if it is through Facebook, or maybe we'll get it going towards, the, towards next year, because I think support and one of the things I want to cover in this is I wanted to give you guys sort of a, um, a, a situation where you actually check in and buddy with each other. Although we didn't have a chance to do it in this course, it's something that I teach very strongly in my book, uh, is, is, is absolutely getting together with another person 
and using them as a catcher's mitt for your own career. So you write down your goals and you check in on a weekly basis on how's that goal going. That way you're not so easily, as Dan was saying, you don't let everything get in your way. You actually are like, I can do this in this week. I can do this in this week. This sabotage me. You're actually able to see with another person your dream and they can actually help your dream manifest. So maybe that's something we'll do next year, I think would be good for everybody because you can buddy up with people, but you got- Dream catchers, we're dream catchers. We're well, catching yeah. in the mid, the dream catchers. You're right, and you're, you are dream catchers, but I gotta tell you, it's gotta be the right person. It can't be the person who, when you get together with them and go, oh, let's go have pizza, or let's go bowling. It can't be a fluff. It's gotta be someone who's committed and you're committed to them. Because yeah. if it's not, you either end up rescuing somebody and your dream never gets, um, you, you either become a shadow artist and your dream, you never get to your dream or you just go and do social things. And I, I don't recommend actors get together for social things. I recommend they get together and work and then they can do social things after. And I always say work before play. That's always my motto. Is, is do the work first and then you can go play. Um, Absolutely, definitely. Samantha, please tell me how it was writing your I Remember scene. Um, well, it was kind of difficult in a way. Um, it was just something that happened so long ago that it, I had to get the memories back and they weren't really very pleasant memories. So they're... Um, there lies the issue and in creating something like this because it was coming from a place that wasn't fun and game. <laughs> and the funny, the funnier thing is when I practiced with Alex, um, he actually had almost an exact same issue uh, uh, that happened to me in, in almost the same way. You know, and um, we we got to discussing how it was and how it felt because they were both really awful. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's what happened. It was difficult, but um, I did what I could to get it done. But did you guys find that even if you did write something difficult, you found it healing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, um, I. I, today I was, I will just be honest with you guys, today I was experiencing a little bit of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder because I watched the movie Uncle Fred last night, Uncle Frank, sorry, Uncle Frank, mm -hmm. and it was about a guy who goes back home um, after his father dies, and and it was a, it was a kind of a, a gay story, but that's not what got me. What got me was the artist, the guy who had gotten out of his small town, went to a big town and he, and he was a somebody, he was a professor, but he came back to his small town and he was a nobody. He was still crippled in his life because of the traumatic stuff that happened. And, and I was telling Chuck today, my partner, y'all know Chuck, I was, telling, I was like, it wasn't about the gay story that got me. It was about a guy who went back to his hometown and always drug in the invisible bone. He could never get anyone's attention because he was never on their radar because he didn't fit in, you know, and into their, their what they were, um, what, you know, their children and, and their lives. And, you know, and I told you guys, I wrote a whole screenplay last year um, after my dad died. Um, about when I was in the 10th grade and I had to go into the Mason's home because my stepdad left my mother. And I wrote that last year um, and, it, and it was so part of healing old wounds because I got to get it on paper. And, and I'm gonna tell you guys, the reason I have you guys do I remember is not to trigger you or make you go down a negative rabbit hole or anything like that is because I want you to have access to your life. And I want you to have access to that material 
because often if you don't have access and a grip on that material, it always throws you off. You, know, you don't know, as Dan was saying, why you're self-sabotaging. And sometimes by getting our stuff, whatever our stuff is on paper, and even turning it into screenplays or plays, it actually, you actually have power over it as opposed to it having power over you. And I hope that rings true for everybody and makes sense if you've written something traumatic and hard. And I also want to say we all have, everyone has their own set of traumas and their own set of addictions and their own set of things. So it's not nothing to be embarrassed about, you know, it really isn't. Right. Um, so, okay. So, and, 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 and it's brave and it's brave and it's deep to share your stories. Even if you write something that's like a love that, that, that didn't happen, or you write about the anything, anything that you write, it's part of your DNA and it's part of your story, and it's part of your original story. And that's what I like about what I teach actors, is I try my hardest to get actors to own their own story and thus own their own stuff and own their own lives. Does that make sense to everybody? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, all right, so I am going to turn this over now um, to the scene work. And how I want to do this is I'm going to read your name, and I want you to just give me a little, ex I don't want you to give me an explanation of the scene. I want you to tell me why you chose this scene, and why do you think it is your vein of gold, okay? So this is a I want you to, once again, I want you to tell me why you chose this scene and why do you feel it is your vein of gold? Like primarily the character and the theme. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. So first up is going to be Jessica. Okay. Um, I wrote this scene because um, well, I had just written the memory, the I remember when you gave the assignment and you assigned Lorenzo and I thought, okay, well, he's just perfect for this because, you know, it's like this um, kind of like adorable dorky guy um, that I fell madly in love with and um, and it was cathartic to, to put it out there on paper. And so Bane of Gold, I mean, it's something that I really lived through. Um, and I, I guess it's right there in the pocket with like adventure, you know, adventure romance kind of thing. Okay. Please read the scene for us. And everybody else, please mute yourselves while they're doing their scene, okay? All right, Ms. Jessica, are you ready? Ready. Here we go. I will try to be adorable and dorky. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure it's okay we didn't like go anywhere? I didn't want to go anywhere. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, step out here with me. It's freezing. Check out the view. What? I'm, I'm not dressed. Wrap up in the sheet. People will see me. No one can see you. Are you sure? Wow. Oh, wow. There's like so many boats down there. Oh, I, the, bowl, the boats all look the same at night, but it's the tall one. The tall one, yeah. So I just realized um, you injured yourself on purpose, didn't you? What? Well, I mean, it's, it's not so bad. You couldn't get out of work, so you let the hammer drift and whack you. Just enough. Busted a thumb, two days off. I guess I, I felt obligated. 
You're crazy. You're? Wow. Hey, turn around. Look up. Whoa. You don't see that in the city. No. So we can navigate by the stars. Do you know any of them? Um, Orion's Belt. How about the North Star? The brightest. Right. And if you're not sure, just put your finger up into the sky and find the Big Dipper. There? Yeah, good, good, right there. Now, follow those dots all the way right there. <laughs> and now you've got your east and your west. <laughs> you probably think I'm a dork. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what is happening? This is so, so, so. So I'll be headed out to the east. This is so unreal. And in two years, I'll come back from the west. Oh my God, you're perfect. You're just unreal and this moment is perfect and romantic and I just, I need it to last. I just really, really need it to last. So turn around. What the fuck is going on? See the moon? It's perfect. Are you, are you okay? Hey. Hey. <whistles> are you tearing up? Babe, look at me. Hey, gorgeous! Hey, it's just, it's just a lot, okay? Well, think of it like this, all right? I will be looking at that moon every night. And it just so happens it's the same moon that you'll be seeing. So some would say it's kind of like we're connected. I hate this. I hate this. You know, you could visit me somewhere. Cape Horn, the South African Cape Horn. We'll be there for a while and I would You want me to love... fly to Africa? Yes! Meet you in Africa. You got it, baby! Come on, gorgeous! Yes! Scene. Nice. Nice. Okay, that was, that was absolutely terrific on both of y'all's vein of gold. Because Jessica, I got your sense of your adventure. And Lorenzo, I also got your sense of like wanderlust and not wanting to sat, stand still. And Jessica, I just want to focus on Jessica now because this is more of her vein of gold. But the sense of, you said it was a rom-com. How many of you guys could see this scene in actual a rom-com movie? Raise your hands. Yeah, that, that is a very strong vein of gold for you is that rom-com and that, that woman who's just a little strung out over a man and can't really get her bearings. You know, what you wrote is an extreme truth about yourself. And do you feel that? Uh, and, and yeah. Feel it when you read it. Did you feel the power of your own self coming through it? Um, yeah, I mean, um, more in rehearsal than it tonight, because it's so weird to be like, Lorenzo's all the way over there, the camera's over, do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's this like duality of things that are happening right now. Yeah. Um, so it's really I don't even hard. get to look at you half the time. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm it's never looking at you. <laughs> way to connect. Um, but didn't you find that you were able to, to understand yourself in a character that you wrote? And there's so much power in that? Yeah. I understood her better. And I, what's funny, we, you know, we hear in the Zooms, we talk to you, you're a nice person. But a after reading the, your scene, I, you, I'm just like, man, I want to hang out with this. This girl is fun. And <laughs> uh, I know. I, so it's really awesome. And, and, and that's the value of 
of I think writing your own scenes is because you yeah, and, and that's why I, well, I wanted to ask you guys at the top why did you pick this scene why is it important to you because you're going to find the scenes that you write and the monologues that you write they're not arbitrary the things that you remember are are the stronger parts of your dna and believe me guys that is where your real power lies in performance and in writing and in your life does that make sense that we think it's arbitrary and we think oh i'm just writing a cute little scene but even in writing a cute little scene or a scene from your life you realize what a powder keg it really is does that make sense yeah, like yeah. like the things that that jessica writes about are probably would be way different than the things that i would write about even though we have like a theatrical background and we like a lot of the same things you would find that we would have different parts of our dna that were different and strong and and the more you own that stuff i'm telling you the stronger your life is going to be okay um jessica thank you for sharing that that, that was a beautiful beautiful story um, um now i'm gonna go i'm gonna skip down and i want to hear from um dan and 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 rebecca has um stepped in to be his reader but dan i want you to tell me once again why this is your um why you chose this and why do you think this character is your vein of gold it, well, I chose this because it, it, um, I play neurotic very well. And, uh, and uh, um, particularly trying to keep control when everything is out of control. And, um, and I thought it would be also great for Rebecca because uh, I saw her use the word Pollyanna in chat. And so I thought, so I, you know, I was trying to consciously pick something that I thought would work for both of us. And, uh, um, yeah, so here we, yeah, so that's why I picked it. And I think it's, I think it'll work. I think it will end up in being both of the. Do we need to know anything, do we need to know anything about the scene characters or where it's set? We're roommates. We'll just say that. Perfect. She's coming home, at, at, you know, and we're, we're roommates and I think it'll be, it'll be self-revelatory. Okay. I want to see it. Let's, let's see it. Okay. Hey, how's it going? Okay, um, I guess um, my friend Brian let me go over to his place today and take a shower. So I feel like a human being again. No sign of water yet? George says it'll be another three days before they can hook up the gas and we can have hot water again. Well, at least we have basic plumbing. Well, thank goodness. It's happening again. It's okay. It's okay. I'm getting really tired of these aftershocks. You know, the old lady downstairs, she moved back with her cat. What? Really? Already? It, it's all going to be okay. It's okay. How, how are you so optimistic? I mean, really, how are you so optimistic? Well, hey, see, we have power again. We have power again. Okay, okay, I, I guess you're right. Okay, now do the hot water. <laughs> End of scene. Great. Okay, so once again, did you guys did you guys see Dan's vein of gold again? Remember, Absolutely. Remember his remember his story about nine eleven. Remember about him him leaving the the apartment. Dan, do you see how this is this is exactly the same vein of gold? Now, now I do. Now that you mentioned nine eleven, I, I now that you mentioned that I see it. 
and 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 it and it's a it's a it's a set in a specific time, a specific location, and all all of them are. But yours is more like a once again, it's like like I keep saying glass menagerie. It's like a memory. You you go you go way back in your memories, and you're very specific with them. Do you, do you see how that is is one of your vein of golds, a very yes. strong vein of gold. Yes. Um, so very, very good scene. And very, yeah, very good scene. And Rebecca, thank you for stepping I, in. I even went, I even got the exact song that started playing from the radio when the power went came back on. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that is, and I, and one of the things I, I wanted to say about acting is acting is not just the lines on the page or the character. Acting is every single muscle, hair on your body. And the more ways you can connect yourself with the character, the stronger it's going to be. Um, one of the tasks I have in the book is um, for when you're creating characters, and we're not going to go into too much of that here, but it's create a character soundtrack. Because I think when you can connect your character to music, it connects you to that time and that place, you know? I, um, and, and the more specific you can be, you know, if you just go, oh, the char it's 1970s and it's disco music. That's not as specific as Donna Summer, 1978, Studio 54. Do you guys see? Oh, yeah. Yeah. much different than disco. <laughs> what? What do you yeah, say? that's a lot more specific. I mean, Studio 54 and just disco, 70s, a lot different. Yes, that's good. I like that. But and, and, and if you can connect yourself to as many memories as you as Dan did and as Jessica did in their I remembers, the more you the more you do that in your life, the more you're going to be able to translate that into characters. And I'm going to tell you the real secret. It's going to set you aside at auditions, especially if you get a piece of a copy and you start writing down the music and all, every little detail, um, even on even at a, a stupid commercial audition. It's going to set you apart from all the other ones who look just like you because you're going to go in there with a um, I worked for a casting director once and they were going between two actors. And, and I remember the head, head of casting said, well, let's go with him. He has a stronger point of view as an actor. Now, they were both equal in terms of what they were doing in the room. But they wanted this guy because he had a stronger point of view as an actor. And I don't mean he probably went in there and started shouting his religious or political beliefs or anything like that. He just had a stronger presence, a stronger point of view as a person. Whereas I think the other person was a good actor, but probably just showed up kind of like that straight boy kind of vacant look, you know, he didn't have a strong point of view. So the, these exercises will give you a strong point of view and you want that because you want to be set aside. You want to be different at auditions. And I don't mean wildly crazy different at auditions. You want to stand apart in your own energy and your own specificness. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Dan, were you the one who, who compared, like you, you felt you were a lot like, like the character, or you like doing stuff like George Bailey? Yeah. 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 Well, okay. For like, like Frank Capra stuff. That's great. Yeah, well, when you did that, it just kind of reminded me that you, you play that everyday guy who's going through problems so well. Like if you get those, I, I think you're always going to get rocket because you, 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 I, I believe it so, so much. Not that you're that, but you just play that very well. I get cast that a lot. Like I'm the guy who's like, every craziness is happening around me. And yeah. I'm like, I've been called like a really good straight guy in the sense that the, 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 the loonies are happening around me. And I'm and like, it, it's, and, you know, it's, it's really actually challenging to play a straight man convincingly, not straight man in sexuality, but straight like the, uh, the uh, so-called the normal one, you know? Oh, well, just, just oh. take it. They don't really think much. They just think about women and we're all good. That's about it. They have no other. No, no, no. But I've been I, I, I in terms of comedy to like, it's actually, it can be very, it can be a very funny. Um, yes. Yeah. 
you can be a very and, funny, you know, straight man. And yeah. And, and Dan, every every you did well. Thank you. Every yeah, you did. And every comedian likes crazy, like like a loose screw, like me. We need a straight man. And I don't. We need I that. Need, yeah. You got to have someone in comedy who is somewhat grounded. You know, that's why on Will and Grace, you know, Mega Malali and Sean Hayes are off the hook, and then the other the two leads are kind of grounded and kind of normal because you need that groundedness in comedy, you know? So playing the straight man is often very difficult. Um, I was once uh, working on um, uh, my play Legends and Bridge and the girl that we cast as Joan Crawford, I yes, said, I she's, the, she's the straight man. She has to play legit. And the actress that we got always wanted to play the camp. She wanted to play the over the top and add shtick to it, you know, or shoe off and thing limping around. And I said, that's not really the character. Betty Davis, my character, is the one who's got to be over the top and crazy. And Judy's got to be crazy. Okay, so, and she couldn't get the concept of what a straight man, what their function was. They set up the jokes a lot. But, but I also think that there's a tendency in actors not to trust that being a really great straight man is enough. And it, actually, they're the radiant one because there's a fulcrum around it, which every, everything happens often. So, I mean, they, they don't trust that nobody will pay attention to me if I'm, but they're the ones they cut to for the reaction shot. You know, they're the ones that they, everyone looks, look, you know, you know, so it's like, they're just they're, as important. Yeah, they're, 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 they're the, they're, they are equally important. And it's hard for an actor to go in and read copy without finessing it. Uh, if it's a straight, a straight man, as you're talking about, uh, Dan, that we're talking about right now, it's hard for an actor to go in and be grounded and read that, you know? Um, I think it was, um, it was on the set of The Line in Winter um, when um, Catherine Hepburn and Chuck, who is that guy's name? Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins Hawk, yes. did the scene. And he was all, he was, he was, he overacted. He was all over the map. And Catherine Hepburn took him aside after one rehearsal and said, don't act, darling, just say the lines. I'll be acting all over the place. You just say the lines. Cause she, and she, and he says that he saved her. He, he saved, you know, she saved him because he learned the value of just saying the lines and not overacting them. Does that make sense? And that's very hard to do, Dan. That's very, it's a very, it's a, it's a skill that I think you, you, I think you could dig into actually in your acting and it'll take you far. Yeah. And Lorenzo, thank you for pointing that out. He's too busy being Italian over there in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Now I want to move on to I want to move on to Ashley. Hey. Hi. Hi. Uh, so I picked my scene, I guess, because I it's been like a thing that I'm still trying to get over and deal with. And also because I just looking at like Rebecca's vein of gold, I was like, ah, this is perfect. Because it's a phone call between me and my mom. And my mom has always like my mom is my biggest fan and I love her and she's my best friend and I call her like two times a day, but she's very like tough love. Like she can be very like, oh, but then she's like, Ashley, this is how it is. And I'm going to tell you like, you know, so I, uh, yeah, that's why I picked mine. <laughs> Great. And why, and why do you think it's your vein of gold? I think just because of the, just, it's the naive idea I'm having in this scene but then it's also just I'm just so angry and I'm frustrated and like when I get flustered I just talk and I talk and I like build things up in my brain and I just go off but then I'm like I'm crazy so <laughs> I'm like okay yeah. let's let's see this I'm I'm excited I I really am okay let me open it hey mom Hi, Ashley. How are you? I'm good. What are you doing? Nothing really. Just making some dinner. And you? 
Um, I'm just sitting on the couch. I missed my virtual voice lesson again today. I mean, I went, but I didn't really want to do anything, so she said I didn't have to, and I just kind of left. Ashley, isn't that bad for your grades? No, she's being, like, really, really flexible. I just, <laughs> I'm starting to think that even they know that online art school is a joke. Oh, Ashley, please, you need to try to make, make the best of things and at least learn something still. Mom, honestly, I really just didn't want to. Ashley, come on. It's not that big of a deal. All we can do is make the best of things when things happen. And you know things happen for a reason. Mom, there is no best to make out of this. I'm not learning anything. Not a single thing except how to write essays about dance and acting instead of actually getting to do it, which is definitely what my out-of-state tuition is meant to be paying for, so. Oh, for the love of God, Ash, come on. It's going to be fine. When are you coming home? I don't want to come home right now. I have to wait until they pick a new date for graduation. Ash, you really should come home. Maybe you could wait it out here. Mom. Who knows if graduation will happen at all. We could book your flight next week if you want. But I, I really just don't think that... Oh, no. And, and honey, maybe you'd be less upset if you were here? I'm not going to be less upset. I know you might not understand what I've been saying this whole time, but oh my God, all I wanted to do was graduate. I've spent four years dreaming and fantasizing about getting to walk with my class and wearing my cap and gown and taking a picture on that stupid panther statue and... I know you, I know you wanted that, but there are so many people that wanted that. I know that, but these are my feelings right now and I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, please don't talk to me like I'm one of your girlfriends. Ashley, you have to move forward and realize that it really could be much worse. Oh, Ash, you keep calling, you keep yelling and crying, and at this point, there's nothing I can do if, if you don't want to move forward. How am I supposed to move forward when they send me email after email after email about how I won't get to graduate and how they want us to return our cap and gown? Completely just send it back. Oh, and how I have an outstanding balance that I need to pay, which miraculously was the only thing that didn't get canceled. But thank God it'll be worth it when they send me my piece of paper in the mail. <laughs> like, You're right. You know, it looks stupid to you. You're right. It does look ridiculous. But you know what looks even more stupid? Is for you, Ashley, to sit there and not give yourself a chance to do anything about it. You know I love you, Ashley. But I won't listen to it anymore. I just won't. So you, you take your sheet music and your dance shoes out of that trash can you put them in and figure something out. Ashley? I am so serious. In this thing. Wow. Ashley, how did you feel about that? Um, it was a lot. My heart is like, <laughs> I don't know. It's different. I've never done a scene that is so connected to me because it's literally like, me I journal a lot but I've never like shared it with anyone so it's like it's different <laughs> you rocked it you have a very strong voice how many how many of y'all's hearts were all beating very frantically at that yeah you you you, you brought such a a big presence to that and 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 that I think that is part of your vein of gold this like person who can put on a veneer but then it cracks and once it cracks it's like the dam opens up and i'm and and ashley that is when i don't know if you plan to audition for tv and film and i hope you do 
Those are the types of roles that are perfect for lifetime movies, Hallmark movies. That type of emotion, someone who can dip into that, and even the rom-com. Um, Cause you have a very um, similar vein of gold, not the same as Jessica's, where you can get into that hurt place very quickly, but you can also come out of it very quickly as well. You know, you don't have a morbidness about your, your character or your vein of gold. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. it was, and it was very strong writing between you and the mother, that mother dynamic, you know, that, that mother-daughter dynamic is, is a very strong part of your vein of gold as well. You know, so look at any script that comes along with the mother and daughter, um, you might really lean into because there's a lot of energy there. Whereas like Jessica's, her vein of gold was more of like the man and the woman and Jessica really goes there. You could really go there with like you're a mom or a dad. Does that make sense? But it's yeah. still that same type of dynamic that, that you guys share, which is exciting. Dan, were you gonna say something? I was going to say this mother-daughter dynamic is so so in so many different genres, and it's so such a rich. It's so rich. There's so many amazing movies from Terms of Endearment to, to to even comedy. If you remember Murphy Brown and her mother, you know it's the same relationship, but it's done it done in very different ways. And I and for me, this uh, this uh, was totally completely changed what I what I saw as your as your major th what I call your major thrust or the vein of gold. It was amazing, and and. Um, I, I completely think, I hope you do do film and television because you convey, you just, the camera just, you just, it just conveys right through the camera and it's, it's great. Um, um, but it, but it was the, the, the raw, pure heart of what you were saying was amazing. And there's this archetype of parents and children who just keep talking past each other because their references aren't the same. And that's, and, you know, and then you live long enough you'll see the grandparent and parent talking past each other and then they're talking past each other, the kids. You ever saw the movie Parenthood, the original one from 1989? No. Five generations who keep talking past each other because all their references are different and they're all tr trying to find a way to communicate with each other. So this was, um, so I, um, really powerful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the fact that you, you actually had the guts to write it and to go strong. You didn't write a, a weak scene. And you also, and I will say this too, you also write, wrote right at Rebecca's vein of gold too, a different part of her vein of gold. But I actually saw Rebecca pulling stuff out of this that I haven't seen in Rebecca yet, which is very dramatic and tense and straightforward. And it wasn't Pollyanna. It was kind of Pollyanna, but it was like enough of the BS. Look, this is what you have to do. Pull. I mean, that was very strong. You wrote two very strong characters there, and I think there's more writing in you. So keep. I want you to keep at it because there's a lot of good writing in you. Um, now, speaking of um, good writing, <laughs> Lorenzo. <laughs> oh boy, I have to follow her. Yeah. <laughs> it was too good. I don't want to follow her. Would you rather follow me? <laughs> I didn't even think I didn't mean it like that, but that was really good, Ash. You should take that video and you should put it on Facebook. You'll get like twenty thousand hits. Oh gosh, you totally will. <laughs> especially, especially when you're talking about how I, I, you know, you just wanted to go in the statue. You wanted to walk down and down the, and they didn't stop your payments. But you got to, everyone in the world will relate to that. And yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right, absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. So. Yes, so um, I uh, this particular scene I'm doing, I uh, thought it was my vein of gold because the emotions it deals with, I, uh, uh, I, I think I can do that. Uh, it's a short scene from, uh, uh, it was important in my life because after this, I wanted to end this relationship years before, but I thought I shouldn't. I, I, I don't know why I thought I shouldn't. And then, then when I, ended it in the worst way. I, I was so relieved though. And it, it taught me so much that, you know, you, you, know, you shouldn't wait for things just like this and just waste time. And uh, so that was a big uh, moment in life when I realized I shouldn't waste time with 
anything in life, regardless of acting. Right. Why is it your band of gold? Oh, because of the, emo- I think because of the emotions it deals with. And uh, I understand this situation uh, a lot. Okay. So yes. let's hear it. Uh, sh- Bella, shush. <laughs> yes, if my dog doesn't bark at me. <clears throat> What's this? I don't know. What is it? This? Oh, that. You know, I, uh, I did my shoot and we had love scenes, so I wanted to make sure I was healthy. So that's your answer? The truth is my answer. Why did you get an HIV test? Because of the shoot. Why do I have to repeat myself? Uh, okay, so, so, so every single time you wrap a, sh- a movie, you're gonna get tested? Better be safe than sorry. You're lying. You know, you're just upset because you're having a hard time accepting me doing love scenes. Yes. Yeah, you know what? I do. I have a hard time with that. And it just so happens that every single film you do, your co-star is an ethnicity that you're attracted to. I need to pack because my plane is leaving soon. Have your dad take you. Because we're done. Goodbye. Ten years together, and, and this is what you're saying to me? God, I know that you're lying to me. Yeah, it is sad that after ten years, you are treating me like this. I'm telling you the truth, damn it! Good lord! Oh my god, have a good flight! Fine! I cheated! Asshole! I'm the asshole, it's you! Oh, I didn't do anything here, but you know what? This I have to hear. Exactly! Nothing! You don't ever want to do anything. You don't ever want to fool around. You don't care about life. You don't care about yourself. All you do is complain about everything Uh, and place blame. You're, I don't know, uh, like the God's gift to the male race or something, you fucking asshole. I never said that, but at least I take responsibility and try. Bye. That's still my favorite part when you do that and put it down. I love that. Yeah, that's it. Scene. Wow. <laughs> she <laughs> always made me laugh too. <laughs> Are you breaking your computer? I was Not. worried. <laughs> well, one time I did slam it shot. So now yeah, she did. It was so funny. That's great. That was good. Lorenzo, that is that is a wonderful, wonderful scene that you wrote. Very dramatic, very intense. It's the exact opposite of the one that Jessica wrote. And that's what made it really dynamic because we got to see you guys in, let's say the first part of the movie, if we were gonna put these scenes oh, together. That's a good idea see, actually. Yeah, now we got to see you in act two of the movie, <laughs> you know, but it was very, very strong and, and powerful. And, and, and your vein of gold is that, that, that lovable loser. But also, the, there's also a, in your band of gold that hothead, you know, like like yeah. Stallone. You know, you can turn that on and become very irate and um, sort of uh, over 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 dramatic, like Italians are. You know, th- that that over dramatic thing. Um, now you said the emotion is your vein of gold. Why do you feel that that is your vein of gold? Well, I don't know, anger, I've always just been, maybe because I am Italian, but I've just always been something that I found very easy. Uh, Maybe it's the, you know, I had a great upbringing. I just, I relate, I I could do anger really well. I've had in the, my uh, late thirties, early forties, I've had a lot of horrible things happen. So that made it even you know, an acting teacher once told me when bad things happen, your acting career, your acting will get better. And she was dead right. So that, of course, makes it, you know, even better, I, I think. But those, that's why I said the emotions are, I connect to them and I think I excel in those emotions. You, you do. And, 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 and one of the things that I would love to see you do is add more character, do more, 
do more a little bit of a character stuff with your with your acting because you're good at tuning into it when it's you but i would love to see you play more of a more of a character does that make sense could you give me a little more data about that um um it, it seems like it's it's you're you're great at playing you but i would love to see you play a little bit more put it into a character into okay. a, a, a a character that is not you that you fully envelop does that make sense yes a, a character who is a hundred percent not you but you play that character a hundred percent if that's any yeah, sense I got it. at all uh, because in all the work I've seen you do, it's it's kind of like Lorenzo, and I see Lorenzo, but I'd love to see Lorenzo playing the character. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Okay, because um, because there's a lot of emotions that you have that I would love to see you transmute into a full hundred percent character, and I think you'd be great at that. Got it. Okay. Because I, I, you have a lot in you. You have a lot in you. And your vein of gold is very strong and passionate. And I think to see you actually channel that into a character that's, that you build from the ground up, I think would be so fascinating to watch. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Hi, Alex. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm myself. Yes. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. 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 Um, um, we're going to go to Miss Rebecca now. Okay. Um, this is from my childhood. And uh, it's deep seated in me because it was a turning point in my childhood where I, my whole vision of things changed. Okay. And, um, okay. And why was it your, why would you say it's your vein of gold in terms of acting? As ter in terms of acting, um, because it's, it's uh, telling a lesson learned. And um, when I reread what you had said about me last week, um, I, when I read it, it popped at, out at me and, and that I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm. I learn lessons in life and I wanna pass them on. Okay, so let's, let's see this scene, you and Ashley. It was a Saturday morning the one day a week I got to go bike riding with my friend Glinda. She and her mom came on Saturdays to help my mom. Glinda brought her bicycle and I had mine. We rode up and down the streets, making adventures, up and down alleys, which we pretended to be deep forests surrounded by Robin Hood and his merry band of men. Every corner there was a turn leading us to a new destination, a new world. Hours of fun, hours of pure friendship. At the end of the day, we would hug and pledge to have even more fun the next Saturday. On Monday, I went to school as usual. My first class was history with my favorite teacher, Mrs. Boyd. She was my favorite because she explained everything and made history come to life. Oh, uh, Becky, may I see you for a minute after you get through with your backpack? Becky, are they moving in? Becky, are they moving in? Becky, the Negroes. The Negroes, Becky, are they moving in? Well, I saw you last week riding your bike with one. Was that you? It was on Saturday. Oh, well, I wondered, and so I thought I'd ask you. Well, go on to class. I walked away. 
stunned. Innocence broken. Oh, <laughs> I remained friends with Glinda for many years, but that day, my favorite teacher was no longer my favorite. In the scene. Great. I loved how that, that scene went from one character perspective to the, to the teacher and how the lesson learned was a gigantic lesson, a, a, a lesson that is like embroidered, branded in your memory. Um, that, that is the kind of scene that you could take and you could write that and that that could actually be like, uh, like I said, Lifetime. It could be a movie. That could be like the flashback of a movie. That could be the beginning of a movie, you know. Um, uh, um, and 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 I really saw strongly the teacher being so much so racist and so concerned about how it looks in society and putting that on a kid, that, that is a very powerful scene. And, and, and it's, and I loved how you put yourself in the position of the teacher. You know, you didn't play the kid, you played the, the, the racist teacher and that, that is a fascinating vein of gold for you, Rebecca. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a like, lesson to play that hateful kind of character and not know you're the hateful character <laughs> and to play that 100% without flinching and without commenting on it. Do you know how that is very hard to do? And a lot of actors would shrink from that. And you didn't. Yes, Dan. I want to say those uh, those roles win Oscars, by the way. People yep. who are willing to play them. If you remember, Shelley Winters in A Patch of Blue played a mother who who injured her own daughter. You know, the, the, the or, or the or the mother from Precious more recently, Monique. You know, being willing to play an unsympathetic character as an actor, it's, it may not. Believe it or not, it, it's it's. Uh... And a lot of actors, um, if you read Michael Shirtliff's uh, book Audition. He will say a lot of actors don't want to go there. They would want to pretty it up. And the fact that you didn't pretty it up, it drew us in. And, 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 and that is, I think that, you know, as much as I joke on Facebook and I call you Pollyanna and you call yourself Pollyanna and that's a little joke between us, mm -hmm. underneath Pollyanna, there's something else. And that's what makes your character and the character you work you do, fascinating. Cause you can put all of that trauma type stuff into legitimate characters. You know, look at the mother in Still Magnolias. Look at that scene where after Shelby dies and she has to, she has to sit there and come to terms with her anger. That is the kind of role that like Dan says, wins Oscars, because a lot of a lot of actors don't want to go there. And I read I read a um, uh, an article um, about Sally Field, and she said, "When I act, I I let myself get real raw before I take on a part, because I want to have access to every single emotion that I have access to to bring to the part. So I get myself really raw." and ragged before I do a big role, like, like the one in, in, um, in Steel Magnolias. Um, does, does that make sense? It does, and thank you. And, and, thank writing, you. and writing about something like that brings you to your, your, your truth. And, and I think there's more, and I know there's more stories in you, but that was absolutely, fascinating to see you play that type of mother 
teacher archetype as to what you did with Ashley. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yes. It's, it's a total different, and look at it when you look at this tape and look at that because they're two different, complete different, but similar vein of golds. Okay. Okay. So great, great job. Brave, brave writing. Great job. Um, okay, okay. I want to move on now to Carol. All right. Well, Jessica, it's nice to jump in. We didn't get a lot of time because my brain was fried, but uh, <laughs> we got to rehearse. Um, I did this scene because, I mean, I always try to do the homework as great as possible, which, by the way, I kind of bragged the first week I did all the homework. I've sucked since then, so I just want to be honest about that <laughs> <You're not laughs> to everybody. <laughs> um, but uh, I like to write things of how I wish I could do it, the fantasy where I can, like, tell someone. So this was, this was good because I could write something that will never happen and that I wish I could ask somebody and uh, Jessica's nice enough to play the other person so and it goes with what the memory is that okay. we did before but okay do you oh sorry do you ever think of anyone but yourself oh my god of course you do I protect my children I protect this community from the damage that you have done me? You're the one with the kid who runs around hitting others, sticking his fingers in places where it shouldn't go. <laughs> no one saw that. You did. You stood right there. You were right there. That's not what a parent does. They guide, they correct, and Andrew said he saw it exactly. See, you deny and you gaslight. Hold on. Wait, my document's not big enough. Hold on. Oh, I can't see the word. <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. You deny, you gaslight, and you just want everyone to go along with you. You are poison. <laughs> Everything that you say is poison, and I just want you to stop it. Lost here. Where are we? Let's see. Is poison... Is there more? I'm sorry. Oh, there's. That's fine. I'll go. But that won't solve the problem. Your kid is still hurting other children, and you don't care. Your porch is a mess, and your neighbor can't sell her house, which she chose to sell after you threw a loud party. And the mail key. Again, you didn't replace it after your freaky kid buried it. You, you, you. You don't think of anyone but yourself. It's not even true. Then prove it. Why the hell did you move to a community anyways? Just to let the village take care of your brats so you could sit on your messy porch like a queen and have gullible neighbors worship you? Oh, uh, that's just ridiculous. I'll go. But your child needs help. What he is doing is not normal. <laughs> but it's the same thing that I did as a child. And you're not normal! Scene. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do you guys see Carol's vein of gold? Did you guys see how clear that was? She plays the woman who is can is unhinged and not afraid to be unhinged and not afraid to say the inappropriate thing. And that, I, I, just what I was saying about Rebecca, playing that type of part, even in a comedy, is very difficult because a lot of actresses would flinch from it and they would pull back and they'd want to play it a little nicer and sweeter. And you didn't, Carol. You you go there. And what I love about you is you go there in your writing and you also have no trouble going there in your, and you say you're not an actor, but you go there in your acting. You, you, you go right in for the jugular of somebody else. Does that make sense? Yeah. And did you say your vein your your favorite game is is trouble? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you have no problem being trouble? And 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 there's nothing wrong with that. And that's a very strong vein of gold. And 
and luckily you got to play with Jessica, mm -hmm. who was completely showing another side of her vein of gold, which is like this trophy wife, kind of privileged, kind of snotty, blonde, pretty woman that Carol, your character never would be. <laughs> right? right? You know, you know, that's why we love Melissa, Melissa McCarthy, because she, when she's good, she's not afraid to show that, that unflinching, crazy -ness, you know? You know, Kathy Bates, mm -hmm. Kathy Bates is, when, when she was younger, she did a play called Night Mother, oh. and, and she, <laughs> And she was so unflinching. People, they had to decompress the audience after the show because, yeah. because she was so powerful. But, but she can do it in comedy as well. Watch her in, um, in the movie. She had a bit part in Men Don't Leave. And she plays the, the boss of, I think it was, um, I forget who the lead actress was, but she played the boss. And she just was unflinching and just like her attitude. It was like, yeah, okay, you're fired. You know, she, the, she just said to the one, the actress, okay, you're fired. And playing someone like that, Carol, is, is great. It's, it's so much of your vein of gold. It's so much of your personality. Getting in someone's crap when they deserve it. People don't do that in society. And to, and, and to play that is very powerful. It's very, very powerful. And it's very strong in you. You're an independent filmmaker, you're uh, an independent writer, and that, that comes through in this scene, right? Did you guys all feel that? That she was just yeah. like, I'm the oppressed one, but I'm gonna step on all the toes I can. <laughs> <laughs> and we wonder why I don't have friends here. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, well, well, you know, well, you know what? Um, your type of character is the kind that would make her own friends and her yeah. own community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's a very strong, that's a, that, that type of independent character is a very strong thing to play. You know, they're always in those Lifetime movies. Once again, we'll go to Lifetime movies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, you know the, the teacher that snaps. You know, there's so <laughs> many roles that you can play with that, you know? So that's Love a very, very strong scene, a very powerful scene. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica, for stepping in. Yes, Jessica, thank you. Trophy wife. I love it. <laughs> play the trophy wife real easily. <laughs> okay. Mr. No, um, Linda. I'm sorry, Samantha, Samantha, sorry. Okay. I'm un unmuted. <laughs> okay. Samantha and, and Alex, you guys are doing the scene together, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Samantha, tell me a little bit about this theme. Why is it, why'd you pick it and why is it your vein of gold? Okay, well, it's something that happened to me and um, I, where I grew up with, um, I always walked around the streets, did what I wanted. Um, when I wanted to go from one place to another, I would get on the high, the freeway or highway in New York and hitchhike. So I wasn't scared of much. <laughs> I used to go all over the place. I was even stopped by the cops when I was hitchhiking and uh, on my way to Manhattan, they said, what are you doing? It's like one in the morning. I go, oh yeah, I was just going to a club. So they called me a taxi. <laughs> so <laughs> so why, why, why is this your vein of gold? Why would you say this is your vein of gold? Well, because um, it was something that was dangerously bad that happened to me and um i did what i could to hold my you know my own and not just completely freak out and and do what he wanted okay so let's see the scene okay um a youngish girl 
in her mid-20s, approaches a subway platform somewhere in Queens, New York, after working as a dancer at a local club at around 2 a.m. Excuse me, miss. I'm a little, from around here, I'm a little lost. Can you direct me to correct platform to catch a train to Brooklyn? Oh, sure. It's, um, you just go, when you go down to the platform, you just go to the left of the booth and you go down the stairs that is to the left and you'll be on the right platform. Thank you. Sure. Well, the young girl goes down to the opposite platform heading to Manhattan. As I glance to the left, I notice that the guy walking on the opposite platform and I just find a bench to sit down and wait for my train. All of a sudden, I feel a cold piece of steel against my throat. I freeze. Get up slowly and come with me. Well, why? What, what are you going to do? Where are you going? Just come with me upstairs. Uh, I, I don't understand. Um, where do you want to go? What do you want? Just keep walking. Do you want money? What are you going to do to me? Just take you upstairs where we can be alone. Look, my roommate, she's waiting for me and she knows when to expect me. If I am not there, she will be calling the police. In fact, she just might already have called the police. I thought you would be different than others. Oh. Oh. oh my God. Oh my God. You people, did you just see that? Did you just see what happened to me? What almost happened to me? I was almost abducted. Why wouldn't you help me? I said, Help! Help! Are you all crazy? What happened? Oh, nice. 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 Yeah, Dan. Dan. You know, it's, it's funny, and I just totally see the subway platform just sitting there staring straight ahead, totally ignoring you as you're saying, why don't you help me? I'm, I, you know, I've been on those pl subway platforms at 2 a.m. But what I want, but what it really hit me is that in many ways, it's really like the vein of gold of your last, like you're the like like the idea of being in a particular place at a particular time, and something happens. And I know this doesn't sound lucky, but the fact that he walked away is so unbelievably lucky. That story could have so easily and so often goes so wrong, but the fact that he just like you got the you were lucky enough to get the front row seat in the last in the in the monologue you did. You were lucky enough to get the person who walks away. I mean, what you said was so clearly bullshit about your roommate, but he just said, I thought you'd be different. Like something magical happened and he just walked away. Like, so you have like the Snow White, like the animals, things just kind of, un, you know, things can kind of unfold harmoniously around you wherever you go because you were in the right place at the right time. And even the wrong place is actually the right place because even the bad guys, you know, you know, aren't really, you know, you know, somehow something, you have a magical power about you. And, and that's it. So it's like, it's the, it's the same game. It's the same, uh, it's, they seem different, but yeah. I see the connection between the last time. Yeah, the thing is, he did not look scary, mean. He was young, he looked younger than me. And I was in my mid twenties. So he looked like he was maybe 19 and maybe in college. He was so innocent looking that you never would think that in a million years that he would even have a knife. Well, those are the ones you got to watch out for. <laughs> you could tell he was bad most of the time. in show business. Um, um, but 
I, but Samantha, I agree with, with Dan that that lucky sort of fairy godmother type thing mm -hmm. is really present in you and being sort of like in this, you're in this world that is surreal and you find yourself in this like extenuating crazy circumstance and you get out like with nothing, not even a nick or, you know, that is, that yeah. is a very strong uh, vein of gold too. The, the right, the, the girl that's in the right place at the right time, the, you know, the, the, the lucky, the girl, the girl that's magically charmed somehow, although she doesn't think of herself as charmed in any way. You know, so that, so, and, and I followed that very, very all the way. I felt, I, I followed it, even though the beginning of it was like, I did this, I sat here and, and that was sort of taking me out a little bit. When you got to the end and you were screaming on that platform, didn't you guys all feel like the camera just would like go right up? Oh yeah. And, and she would just be there all alone and all those people going by her and she's kind of going crazy. That That's is a very, amazing. that is a very strong scene to be able to play. And, and let me tell you, it's very hard to play on a set and be real and in the moment. So that's good practice for you to play that type of, of character who's going berserk and no one around is noticing, you know? Steven, can, yes. can, I, can I echo, like underline something you said? Because you said yes. the charmed who doesn't know that she's charmed. Because there are a lot of people walk around with charmed lives who think they're charmed and it's not charming. <laughs> what makes it charming is you don't is the person who doesn't know that they're that they're charmed, and that's why everything falls into place. The, and you know, it, happened, and, it happened even worse than that, and I got out of it the same way. Like, so by you making remind me of my mother. And um, something that I've said to her for years is like, you should write a film out of her, like her life. And I feel like it's going to be exactly the same for you is like the female version of Big Fish or, you know, the glamorous version of like Forrest Gump. And it sounds like you've got a lot of stories there and you should definitely put them, put them down because um, I think it, it would be a gem. Yeah, I agree because, because, um, you're the type of actress that, Samantha, you kind of have a world of your own. And that is fabulous to play. And I don't just mean the lonely old cat lady either. <laughs> because that would be the cliche, right? And you could play that, and that was one of your inner characters. However, playing the character that's in their own bubble, you know, like Galinda the Good Witch, Mm -hmm. or, or or just the woman that's in her like Jessica said her her mom this this person who's kind of in their own world for some reason I know Jessica's mom is a is is in theater and so she's used to building her own world and her own things I think that is part of your vein of gold a, 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 like a an actress who's in her own world and a um, a character who's in their own not in their head, but they're just in their own fantasy world. That I think is a very strong vein of gold for you. And even That's someone, the mystical, mom and kids even someone mystical like a, like a, like a spiritual reader or tarot reader, something in that vein as well. Someone who deals in the psychic world, I could see you mm. playing as well, like a Sylvia mm -hmm. Brown or um, mm -hmm. uh, Doreen Virtue, you know. Someone who's like metaphysical even, I think would suit you well as well. Yeah? yeah I, I agree. I have to move my, I'll move over to a different area and plug in. <laughs> she has to move to a different world. See, cause this <laughs> I, I, actually, uh, actually, it is here cause I don't have any um, good plugs. Yes, I tried before, but I had a bad plug. So let me try here. I no, think we don't have that problem. Dysfunctional <laughs> plugs. Um, yeah, uh, 
plugs are okay. stuck. Okay. All right, Alex, you're up. All right. All right. Well, my, my story is not that long because I came up with the animal thing because I like animals. I mean, I just came up uh, what happened recently, like uh, that's how I have stuck with three kids right now. <laughs> okay. But uh, pretty much that's on my vein of goal, like I uh, really love animals. Okay, so it's your vein of goal because you, you have an affinity and a love for animals. Yes, passion, yeah. I mean, I like to help them and stuff. I treat them like little kids, <laughs> you know. Are these your kids that are there, or? No, I don't have no kids, but uh, the Peachy, Peachy's right here. He's a. Oh, oh your baby kids. Yeah. Oh, you, I thought you meant real kids. I, yeah, he's a big one. Yeah, look at him. Hi, Peachy. Hi. That, that's bigger than than me. Yeah, Jeez. I know. He's like a, he's a male, and I have female over here. <laughs> I have to bring mine. Look at them on set, those kitty kitties. Yeah. Oh, we got more kitties. Oh, oh, no. oh look at Malika. <laughs> okay, wait. I'm allergic to cats and I'm scared of them. And oh, I, you put that commercial. And I'm always cast with them. That's what I don't understand. <laughs> I <know. laughs> you did great. <laughs> There's another one running around. <laughs> okay, let's, let's do the scene. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the Katrina is the girl that had six cats and was living at this property on a tourist visa. She was from Croatia and had to return back home after visa expired. Katrina took three cats with her, but three could not go as the limit was three per person. Now she re received some inheritance money and it's able to bring them over to Croatia. Hi, Alex. I would like you to take my other two cats from Susan, as you are already watching over Leo and the male cat. Kiki is female and Peachy is the male cat. They need to be with you for a while before the trip. I would like to do that, but what's in for me? Also, Susan have Kiki and Peachy. Well, they are my cats. And Susan needs to give them back to me. Please, please take them away from her. She already has 14 cats. <laughs> I told her to give my cat back and to give them to you. Okay, I'll take care of them. What about food and kitty litter? Oh, I will provide all the food and other necessities for them to be ready for the trip. And also, I will pay for your round trip ticket and a vacation. How does that sound? Oh, yeah. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Good. I will give you instructions on how to take care of them. No one else. And if you want vacation, all three cats have to arrive back in Croatia. Okay. You're the boss. That's it. <laughs> okay. Great. Great. <laughs> now, the thing I got, Alex, from your from that vein of gold is what's in it for me? Yeah. <laughs> that, that is very, very strong in you. That sort of henchman. That sort oh, yeah. of like lovable, yeah. the lovable gangster. Yeah, that's because, it. <laughs> Because, because I like that. You're, 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 you're menacing enough to be a gangster, but you're just not heartless enough to actually be the godfather. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have a heart yeah, of gold. I know. I know. And, 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 and that is, that is like a, the, you know, like Lorenzo has that lovable loser. You know, <laughs> a lovable loser kind of gangster is different than someone who you know is going to kill someone. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a different, it's a different energy and it's, yeah. so, it's softer and it's yeah. harder to play because you know, you're going to want to play the real tough, tough one, but it's, I think it's better to watch, to see you rounded and to see you play the one who doesn't really know how he got into this and he, but he's in it, you know, and you also, 
gave Linda a really great character as well. Oh, yeah. You wrote for her voice. You did exactly what everyone else in the class did. You wrote for her voice. And that yeah. is a very great thing to be able to do as a writer, is to write for somebody else's oh, voice and give them a true... You there? Character. You froze, Steven. I froze? Hello. Oh. Am I there? Am I back? Can you hear me now? Am I? Am I back? <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> Hold on. Oh. Am I back? Yeah, yeah you're back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. So you gave, you gave Samantha something really fabulous to play. And, and, and she's in her own world. She has a, her cat, and that's all she cares about. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll give you a free trip and this and that. All you have to do is just give me my cats. Yep. Okay. So that that's a very, very strong vein of gold. It's like, what's in it for me? What am I getting? Okay. You who and you and you questioned her. Who who's taking care of the who's taking care of the kitty litter? Who where's the food coming from? And she's like, oh, I'll I'll take care of all that. So so once again, you're getting roped into something by the chanteuse in mm -hmm. this case you yeah. know you're getting roped into being the you know this tough guy for the or the caretaker for the kitty cats but I it's used, still the same vein I of gold used to be, i used to be mr nice guy that i used to do everything you know but nah i changed a little bit yeah well that's that's what makes a lovable loser yeah you know <laughs> the one who's trying to get their backbone you know but they still but they still have traces of that other self. Yeah. You know, they're not fully, you know, you know, if you watch The Godfather, um, you know, you watch his backstory, he was a sh he was a D-bag from the word go. He was a kill him up person from the from the get-go. Yeah. You know, but your character would have more of a finesse and more of a more of a heart and probably wouldn't kill someone. You'd probably be like that guy in Bullets Over Broadway who who kills someone else instead of the person he's supposed to kill or something like that. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Um, I love it. I love it. So, so that is, so I would look at roles like that. I would definitely look at roles of like the, the, the second henchman, you know, the one who doesn't yep. kill someone who feels. I know, I know. <laughs> so, okay. So you guys, this was amazing work. The work you guys all did today was brave and it was absolutely amazing. Do you guys feel powerful and strong in everything that you did? I've got my superwoman stance. That's it. I'm oh, glad good. I made it. I, I'm glad I made to it, you know. Well, you know, because telling your stories and writing stuff for other people is a very strong thing to do. Um, because if you can create content, that actually gives you the power in this industry. Because as Lorenzo knows, because he writes his own content, as Carol knows, and as I know, when you create your own content, it gives you way more power than just being actor number 942 that comes through the door and is the hopeful audition, uh, auditioner. Right, 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 Lorenzo? That's right. Yeah, and Carol, isn't that right? You know, it gives you power. Um, so speaking of power, your homework is, um, it's gonna be our last session. So your homework is, you all are gonna keep the same scene partners uh, with the exception of, um, I'm gonna hook Carol up with Dan. Okay. Carol, you're gonna hook up with Dan. Okay, here's what I want you to do. You get a five minute scene between you. So this is a buddy thing. You have to find a two minute, a five minute scene that the two of you can do that, and you have to agree on it. And it is your vein of gold. Are, are we writing it or are we looking no. it up? No, sky's the limit. You can do it from a play. You can do it from a lifetime movie, Ashley. Um, you can, you can do it from, um, a Hallmark movie. You can do it from anything that's been printed any, or you can do it from 
um, a friend's um, play or script, sky's the limit, but you have to, you have to find something that both of you agree on and both of you are great in. So this is your showcase, okay? So take everything that we've done in the vein of gold and I want you to present a five minute showcase. Any questions? So it is five minutes total having both of our veins of gold. Yes, and it has to be able to be performed on Zoom. So I want it more character and dialogue heavy as opposed to action and uh, special features and stuff like that, okay? Okay. Now, do you know a place, if we do want to do theater, um, that has it online already, electronically, plays? Or like, uh, like we get a PDF or something? Because I bet the plays we have to pay for, is there a place online to get those? Um, you can usually get plays from libraries. You can, they're, they're now downloadable usually. Oh, okay. Library. Okay. Um, okay. You can always do a Google search on them. And, um, I mean, if you have something that you really, really want to do and you can't find it, go on to Facebook and say, does anybody have a PDF of this? I mean, it's not really legal, but people <laughs> have scenes of stuff. We're not performing time. it. <laughs> right. So sky's the limit. I really want you guys to showcase your, what you feel is your, your, your strongest talents. And you all have showcased them here tonight. And next week is just an extension of that, okay? okay? All right. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me. You guys are amazing. Good night. And thank you so much. Night. Night, night everybody. Have a good night. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.